Welcome to another episode of Top Lines and Tales, your weekly livestock podcast. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Harbro, for their continued support. This week, we talk to a Cambridge dairy farmer from New Zealand, uh, Mark Gascoigne, and uh, we're going to have a chat about the FarmStrong organization. Uh, uh, Mark, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, really pleased to be here in Scotland. It's a uh, couple of beautiful days the last couple of days. Um, awesome. Excellent. Excellent. And, and uh, FarmStrong advocates the science of well-being. Tell me a little bit more about what, what FarmStrong is. Uh, yeah, FarmStrong in New Zealand is, um, yeah, it's a wellness program. So it's helping farmers live well to, to farm well. Um, it's uh, based around a website, really, but also FarmStrong does a lot of, like, like, I, I do a bit of speaking at different events, um, getting getting farmers together. And it, it, it uh, it's something that farmers can do to to help themselves with their, with their wellness, whether you're, you know, um, suffering from um, mental health issues, or whether if you're not as well, it's um, we all have to look after our um, top two inches, and yeah, it's, yeah. So that, that's what it's all about. Um, yeah, do, that, do a lot of things like um, Farm Strong in New Zealand's produced a um, a really cool book, twenty nine farmers telling their story um, about how they've come overcome struggles in the past, and yeah, lots of pictures for us farmers. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go on in, in to have a look at that in a bit more detail in a second okay. there. Um, but uh, mental health is an issue in all walks of life, isn't it? But particularly in farming, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a terrible statistic that uh, you know the highest suicide rate I think of any industry uh, is agriculture, and a lot of farmers will know that. But even then, it, you know, it we all have days when uh, hey when we get down really. And I think what you, is a brilliant thing that you're doing there. But what you you've got which is almost unique, is the fact that most of you are farmers that are involved in this. You're, just, you're not just a psychiatrist out there, you actually are farmers yourself that, uh, that, that are involved in this. So people kind of maybe think they've got a little bit more more honesty yeah. if they talk to a farmer. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm a farmer myself, so um, I just became involved with FarmStrong as a, an ambassador um, because I, I used FarmStrong um, to yeah, help me um, overcome some pretty serious mental health challenges so it, it's it's worked so well for me so that's why i've got involved in trying to spread the word um and ha- help other people yeah mm. okay and, and when so let's go to the origin farm strong as you said new zealand is obviously this it's that's where it's started and, and you're spreading and we'll have a look in a second and sort of where and how you're spreading but when did it start and, and who, who are the brains behind this who are the people right behind from the beginning um <clears throat> it started in new zealand about eight years ago um Jared Vaughan is sort of the, the man behind um, FarmStrong. He, he's got a bit of psychology background, um, and he he could see the need, and he yeah, it sort of sprung from um, um, some funding from Movember um, in New Zealand, and the founding partners were FMG Insurance, which is similar to the NFU Mutual Group in, in Scotland, um, and they, they could see the value in it because... When farmers are, are, are healthy, are thinking healthy, um, they there's uh, less insurance claims because people and it just makes people safer as well. <laughs> that makes sense. So, yeah, so they they got involved and also um, ACC, which is a the Accident Compensation Corporation in New Zealand as well, for the same reason. It's, it's keeping um, farmers if you're mentally mentally well, you actually. A lot you're making better decisions on the farm so you um you're physically keeping safer as well so it's got all sorts of benefits keeping keeping well mentally and and physically we'll maybe go through a little bit more about the, each of the individual um parts of of, of mental well-being because it's not just about thinking well as you said it's eating well and and doing doing everything the right way and doing it habitually but uh, one of the reasons you're over here is that you guys have set up a farm strong scotland um, branch if that's the right word and uh i know you've got my pal uh, john scott involved in that one from the beginning there and john's a regular on top lines and tails and john i think you're there somewhere uh, uh, hello Mori Andy, yeah, how are you? Um, yeah, Farmstrong Scotland, uh, the seeds were sown in, in in late 2018 when Doug Avery came across and, and did a tour around speaking to farmers. And uh, we've been working on it behind the scenes since then. I'm really excited that we're now in, in 2023 going to launch Farmstrong Scotland. The guys in New Zealand have been really helpful. Gerard Vaughan, of course, Mark coming across as well. 
uh, and we've got a great steering group set up over here. And it's really following the blueprint that they've that they have in New Zealand and involving farmers and in our case farmers and crofters and, and actually creating something that works for the industry. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, it's quite straightforward what we're trying to do, and um, a lot will will revolve around the the resource we've got online. Um, and case studies and peer-to-peer learning and then just getting out there and spreading the word and helping farmers find what works for them in terms of the little tips and um, get more from life because well-being is a it's quite a, a broad subject and it, of course it includes physical and mental health but um, it, it's something we all need to think about and work on and uh, just delighted to be getting it off the ground. Brilliant. And John, I think you're, you're, are you the chairman of the Scottish group? You certainly were. And I see that you've got uh, Alan Laidlaw in there as well, obviously the chairman of, of them, and the CEO of the Royal Highland Society. And, and obviously the Royal Highland um, Association has Risabi, which is their well-being arm, I suppose. Are you guys working with that? So um, I'm lucky to be chairman of this organisation, Farm from Scotland, and RAS have been... Um, key to, to starting off many organisations over the over the years um, and it's great, we've got Alan Laidlow involved, the, the, the good thing about our, our steering group is they're all prepared to step up and take take a lead when we need to so when you go back to Doug Avery when he was here he was talking about a V of geese and you can't fly at the front all the time so we've got a really able steering group that can all step up, RAS have been <laughs> key to this, they've helped with funding at the start um, and we've got Movember involved as well, Movember Foundation on there. They're much funding up to £350,000. It's really important that we, we work with other organisations and Rasabi are, are one of the main ones we have to work with. We're not here to replace Rasabi, we're here to work with them um, and we're looking at well-being very much about that, that, that broader subject of well-being and encouraging everyone to just look after themselves. Okay. And, and uh, John, I know you're busy, so if you want to drop off, please, please uh, go about your daily farming life, which uh, you're, you're a busy farmer at the, all, all the year. But uh, you, like yourself, a lot of these guys that Mark and I were just saying, they are farmers that are involved in, in this organisation. And I think that farmers tend to listen to farmers a little bit more than they might do to the psychiatrists. Yeah, I think peer-to-peer learning is really important. Um, so working with other organisations is really important to us. We're delighted that Rasabi um, are with us on tour with Mark going around the country. Um, it's it's important that we give farmers uh, the, the, the tips and, and tools to, to help themselves, but, but also signpost them to Rasabi if they really do need that one-to-one help. Uh, Farm Strong Scotland is not about one-to-one help. It's about... Um, getting farmers together to share best practice and it's worked really well in New Zealand and the results are speak for themselves the other thing we'll do and what we have done already is we've gone out and we've consulted farmers and crofters with a survey which we've had 500 people take part in and we'll continue to do that and go out there and, and see what the industry needs so we make sure we're, what we're delivering is, 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 is spot on target Okay, well, uh, we have listeners all across the country, obviously a lot in Scotland, and this is a global uh, 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 operation, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail just now. But what have you guys been up to this week then? You, you talked about, are you basically on tour and, and gathering groups together and, and, and chatting through best practice? Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had, so I think there's 11 talks all together, all around Scotland. Um, I've got three left, so yeah, fairly, fairly good um, attendances. Um, and I'm just I just run through um, my my mental health uh, story. I had many years of um, suffering from depression, uh, and um, and I I run through what I what I've used on the with the Farmstrong program to get myself where I am today, and that's um, living the dream basically. And you know, I, I I love love talking about it. <laughs> And I'm um, trying to help people because, uh, yeah, when, when I was struggling, there just no one was talking about it, and it just it felt like there was I was the only one going through it, which is, sounds stupid, I know, but um, yeah, it's just all about normalising it, and um, and yeah, hearing from another farmer that has has worked worked on mental health and got to got come out the other side. Sure, no, that, that's a brilliant thing, and to be able to talk about it is a brilliant thing. And, and as you said, it sounds stupid, it does, but it, you know, when you're in that situation, you don't want to burden other people with with those problems, do you? So when you know somebody else has been through that, then then obviously gives. <laughs> everybody a lift and, and you say you've got you're well attended what sort of numbers have we got are we getting is it just farmers coming in there who suffered a bit of depression or are we just getting people in, in each area turning up to see what you've got to say 
Yeah, it's it's been a bit of a mix. Um, it, yeah, I, I'm really humbled by some of the feedback we've been getting um, and people coming up to talk afterwards saying that this, so much of what I've said has resonated with them. Um, but And also to people um, that uh, are completely, yeah, the normal, not, not, there's no normal, but um, that haven't ever had any of those issues, um, just finding it really good to... Um, Keep keep working on your wellness. So I, I always say, if you if you don't make time to work on your wellness, um, eventually you're going to have to make time to work on your illness. So um, yeah, we, I, we need to just like keeping physically fit. We we need to keep mentally fit too, and just think about all the all the things we're doing to to do that. So one of the main objectives of the tour was to get out there and raise awareness of Farmstrong Scotland, and and storytelling is a huge part of of um, Farmstrong and being able to have someone like Mark with us telling his story, which is, you know, it's a it's a, it's a tough listen in bits, um, but it, he really does, um, he, he's very brave and tells us his, his story and how it all unfolded. And, and we have got people coming along that they've got lots of different backgrounds, um, mainly farmers and crofters, but we've got some people that have, you know, work in the health industry and come along and um, listen to what Mark has to say. And, and you do see people identifying with it, and we've had some great one-to-one conversations afterwards, and we've been able to direct people to get some help. And you've also got people there that um, are just picking up on some of the the physical things there that um, you can do to help yourself. The the five ways to well-being, which Mark will no doubt touch on uh, today. But um, it's been a real mixture of people coming along, and we've had great attendance. Most of the events so far have been over fifty people, um, and there seems to be a real desire for it. The the doors doors are opening. Um, all around us and um, people willing to get involved. One of the other things we want to do is is, is um, reach out to people and make sure they can get involved at whatever level they want. We want people out there on a regional basis talking about Farmstrong and spreading the word. You know, people that work uh, in the support industries, the, the trusted advisors, those feed salesmen and those Harbro salesmen going up the roads. I know you've got a close link with Harbro, Andy. Um, and you know, bank managers, um, department guys, college guys, whoever that's coming in contact with those that are hands on the in, in the, the industry, if we, we can upskill them and give help them, give the people they are in contact with pointers. We can make this thing work really well. That's brilliant, and, and uh, as you said, getting people uh, to volunteer as well to get involved in that. But yes, the, the people that the day to day contact. I, um, uh, my pal Scott Brown, you'll, you'll know there. Scott did quite a bit with this in, in uh, during the COVID time. Well, maybe we'll touch on how COVID affected people. People, uh, in a second but and I know the podcast that I put out there we have regular listeners every week and, and he said when they were, weren't seeing anybody else just to get a chance to sort of have a listen so I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm in the level that you are but I think it's, it's about communication and about hearing from hearing from other people and and, uh, and and their mates across the way communication is hugely key isn't it for, for farmers and yeah the days when they used to go to the market once a week and stand about there that doesn't happen so much these days does it and the shows for that matter agricultural shows as well the communication for all these things is is, is uh, is massive, isn't it? You know, when I was not in a good way, um, I eventually when I did something about it and went to see the GP, my, my GP, and I was just so lucky that this was seven years ago and he had um, heard about Farmstrong. It had just been launched in New Zealand and, and he he just said, oh, have a look at far- this Farmstrong. Okay. So he'd, he'd heard about it. So, yeah, the, those people servicing the farming industry, like you're saying, the the, um, the seed merchants or, or, or the consultants or the going down farm roads, and they're in a good position to um, see people that are struggling, and um, it, it's, they can do exactly what that my GP did that day and just say, hey, I've heard about this farm strong that's, um, that's starting. What, yeah, have a look at that. And um, th- yeah, that's, that's really powerful that, that, that they can do that. People can, so it's got, it can have a really wide reach. If um if it gets you know the word gets out enough, so um, yeah. And and do I? And we're talking men here. We t- we talk about farmers as being men, but I mean farmers' wives will go through a lot of this stress. They they carry the burden of the stress of the farmer as their f- as the first point of contact, really. So we're we seeing a lot of women, ladies, uh, um, farmers getting involved in this as well. I think we've got to be really um clear on this one, Andy. That farmers and crofters um come in all different shapes and sizes and genders and it's it's men it's women it's old it's young um there's there's we, we just want to help everybody um in new zealand it was very much at the start it was it was something that was focused on men but um our approach with farmstrong scotland is very much across everyone it's it's everyone getting involved 
um, I've got to be careful with my agenda here. It's going to sound um, one-sided, but if we could be trained, in, in a lot of cases, the farmer's wife to to, to understand the the, the the mental health health issues with the with the husband. Is that how it works? Can they become you know, um, advocates themselves? Um, I was I was just going to say, um, that like with the figures, I don't know what they are in in Scotland, but in, in New Zealand, it's seventy five percent of suicides are, are male. And um, farmers are uh, overrepresented, unfortunately. But um, I think I, I don't know for sure, but I think a, a lot of that to, um, is because us guys we're not very good at talking. Um, the, the women are much better at sharing their emotions and um, and talking about it. So, but women are in, in a really good position for um, to um, support their husbands. That's so my my wife. Um, she is a legend that she, you know, she stuck by me all, all through those those years. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I still remember it was 15 years ago when I was in, not in a good way. My wife actually said to me to, um, you know, do you th-? she asked me, do you think you should go and see the doctor? And um, and yeah, you know, do you think you should talk about some medication? And I just remember at that stage. Just felt like a, a kick in the guts. I, I couldn't believe she was saying it. I sort of, I felt like um, she was calling me weak at that stage, which was so stupid. Now that when I think back, I wish I'd taken her advice. Um, and it, you know, it only, yeah, it's a bit of a long story, but it's, it's, it was only about seven years later that I finally came to my senses and did something about it. But um, yeah, and she, but she, she stuck, stuck with it, and. Um, yeah, she is a legend. I um, yeah, I wish I'd taken her advice. But sometimes it comes down to the, just the person themselves just have to, you know, have to take responsibility for yourself and actually decide. All right, I've got to do something about this. Sure. Hmm. And so let's just move on to the the five. John mentioned the the five uh, ways of of well being or the five different things. Can we just go into a little bit more depth, a little bit more detail, and sort of what we're talking about? For, I mean, people out there that haven't heard of farm strong people out there that don't really think they need to consider uh, mental health. There, what the sort of things should they be looking at? And, and, and you know, you, you mentioned eating well and about your, your your fitness and what have you. Just run us through those. Uh, but you, I think you run some modules as well on your website. Maybe we'll look at that as well. Yeah, so um, in my talks, I've gone through the the five ways to wellness, which is just just one one part of the um, of the Farmstrong sort of um, website or um, program. Um, there's so much, so many more other tools and resources, but um, you know, the the five ways. I, number one is connecting, um, and when you know when I was when I was going through. My tough time. The last thing I wanted to do was connect with other people. Uh, I would I would make excuses. You know, if we got invited out for a, a party or a barbecue or even even just farm meetings and things, I just didn't didn't go. I just didn't want to go. Which uh, I just wanted to stay at home and, and sit on the couch and feel sorry for myself, which is absolutely the worst thing I could be doing. Um, uh, the trouble with us as farmers, we we spend a lot of our time by ourselves, working by ourselves, and um, some and a lot of time inside our own heads, and and sometimes that can be the, the most dangerous place we can be. Okay. So so now I I connect with absolutely as many people as I can um, every day. I um I've got a group of group group of friends and and um, family that we we get together probably three to four times a week. And we'll either go to the gym or go for a bike ride or a run, um, and it's always, always uh, followed by a coffee um, if it's in the morning or or a beer at, um, in the evening. And that's that's the most important part for me. It's just a bit of bit of banter, a bit of with mates, a bit, bit of talking, a bit of bullshit, um, having a coffee. Um, that's that's the the cool part of it. So, sure. and just even. I mean, connecting with people, even on a tiny level, like, I, you know, I, um, it might not sound like much, but when I'm on our road, on our, at home, uh, driving, I'll, I'll, I'll wave to everyone coming down our road, uh, and that, that doesn't sound like much, but I, when I was over in Orkney, I, I was staying with Pete, Peter Moss, and um, I, 
he, he was, we were driving around Orkney and he, he only had one hand on the steering wheel most of the time because he was waving to absolutely everyone. And that's that's cool. That's just that's connecting, you know. So um, can I just raise a, a point here? I mean, hey, you. I'm, I'm all over the place uh, myself in my professional life I'm here there and everywhere but yeah. I do get a lot of connections with people through social media and social media has its place in society and obviously from maybe we'll mention the COVID uh, and how that changed things to more and more people on social media and I have people that I chat to on social media all the time but yeah. I, I had um, Cammy Wilson I'm not sure if you know Cammy that runs the sheep game and uh, Cammy was on and he said well social media can be equally as destructive as it can be helpful because uh, we, yeah. people put on Facebook and what have you that they're having a great time and they've just been to Barbados and it's lovely and look at that and that can make things worse so how, how do you control that how, how does social media fit into the communication side of this um <clears throat> yeah social media can can be fantastic like I'm keeping in touch with everyone at home at the moment which is a, a great tool um so it's, it's how you how you use it I guess and yeah what like what you're saying a lot of everyone puts yeah, it's just human nature to show your best side on. You know, you put all the all the best photos up and everything, and and that I, I think it's even. I remember when um, I'd even open the, the farming newspaper or um, at home, and it just felt like when I was struggling, it just felt like everyone, everyone else. You know, I'd read the story about about different farms and look at their production and all that sort of thing, and I'd think, oh. They, Every, they've got everything sorted out, and you know, I, I haven't. But it's 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 just human nature to show you the best side of things. And what I've learned um, is that actually no one's got their shit together. <laughs> um, every you know, um, so yeah. I and I think yeah, social media too can be. We can look at things quite negatively. Um, you know, you, you'll see you might see a post on. Facebook about farming, and you'll 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 scroll th- scroll through the comments. There might be fifty positive comments, but you know you might have two or three from some animal rights extremists, and those are the those are the ones that um, wind you up and and put you into a, a negative mindset. Um, so uh, the way I look at social media now, like if get it, now the uh, the way I look at it is if. Being offended by some something on on social media is like stepping in dog shit, and, and instead of walking around it, or choosing to step in dog shit instead of walking around it. So, yeah, you can take. I think you can take the good stuff on on social media, but um, avoid some of those that negative stuff. Don't yeah. Don't worry about it. Cam, Cam, he also mentioned um, when he was on here a couple of weeks ago that he's got a Snapchat group, and I'm the same. We've got WhatsApp groups with some of your pals. And he said on the Snapchat thing, he said you're quite happy to tell your mates that you found the top dead this morning and to send them a picture of it, sort of thing. And then they'll all they all rally around, and so you, you tend to put your your bad shit on there as well as as well as your good moments yeah. but to your mates. And I think yeah, again, it's, that's good advice. I mean, certainly WhatsApp groups where you can all have a bit of crack, and then when somebody doesn't turn up in the WhatsApp group or doesn't comment, you kind of you got an idea maybe that they're not just uh, not themselves. No, so it, as you said, it has its place, and it, but it also has a destructive side. Let's go. Let's just go through the other ways that then that you that you the ways you have of well being that uh, we need to probably. Yeah, at. well, um, second one is um, taking notice, or or some people will let's call it mindfulness, um, and that's just all about uh, taking notice. Like we we all have a, a negative bias to a certain extent, um, and. Yeah, it's pretty. As we've been talking about, it's it's quite easy to see that in our everyday lives, like uh, in the media. Um, I used to say um, bad news sells newspapers, but I think it's bad news gets clickbaits now. So um, we tend to um, we we tend to look look at things um, negatively, and we'll it 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 depends on what how we're taking notice of things. I mean. Uh, ten years ago, I remember my wife buying a, a Mazda three car, and I I thought that's yeah, a nice car, and you know um, I haven't seen many of them around, but so but it's, uh, you know at least we're going to have a car that's sort of quite unique. And then when we started driving it, suddenly there was bloody Mazda threes everywhere. I saw them everywhere I went. So it wasn't that. Um, suddenly everyone had gone out and bought a Mazda 3. They were always there, but my brain wasn't taking notice of it. So subconsciously you tell the brain 
what to take notice of. And your brain will scan the world and, and give you more examples of that and reinforce the way you're thinking. So if you're notice, taking notice of all the bad stuff that's going on in your life and everyone's got a lot, a lot of bad stuff going on, what happens is your brain scans the world and gives you more examples and reinforces how you're thinking. So, um, so I, you know, and I, the way I sort of counteract that, um, I flip it uh, and I, I take notice of all the, the good stuff that's, that's happening. Um, and we got, yeah, when you take, start to take notice of it, there's so much good stuff happening. Um, this morning I've been out for a run and it's such a beautiful day. Went down to the, down to the water and it's, you're just, just taking in, um, and, and taking notice of all that good stuff. Um, so, and I, I've, I've developed sort of, um, habits like, uh, for example, when I have a shower, when I'm in the shower, I'll think of three things that I'm grateful for or three things that went well that day. Um, just to get into that positive mindset, and um, yeah, uh, yeah. So that, that just just habits like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And, and and you talked about um, eating well, and of course, again, farmers tend to eat well because uh, you know we, we we've got our own produce, and, and we and we go with good produce. But it's about eating at all sometimes when you're farming, isn't it? It's about actually getting in and sitting down the t down to the table. So I guess that's another another area that you look at. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've, I've loved the haggis in Scotland actually since since I've been here. Um, <laughs> you'll, be, wife, you'll be putting weight, and that's why you went for the run this morning. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, um, she can't believe that she's looked up what is it, what is in haggis, and she can't believe don't, I'm, don't, I'm never I'm looked, in, never looked to see what's in the haggis, just eat it. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, um, I've, I, I've actually Fiona, who, who I'm staying with, has pulled out a recipe um, book, and I've taken a photo and sent it home. And it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you know, I'm going to be allowed in, back into my home. <laughs> um, but yeah, like with with the eating and the diet thing, I um, yeah, I'm not the best advocate of you know. I I, I love a, a a donut and a pie <laughs> occasionally, but it's uh, yeah, it is a, it is a bit about moderation. Like I see it so much in, in New Zealand with the young young guys, they they tend to. Yeah, you get yourself in trouble if you're just living on takeaways and um, and those energy drinks and and yeah, um, I've I've seen people turn up for turn up for milking with a can of energy drink for breakfast. So that's not going to do you any good at all, and it, it's not very good for your mental well-being either because you you set yourself up. For, so you're just you're going to run out of energy because it's just the wrong type of food. So um, yeah, you got to you got to have the right right food, and um, but. And yeah, in, in moderation, a bit of um, bit of good stuffs, not bad haggis and donuts, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. a good, and a good old Sunday roast. I, yeah, I think that, that's is that three or four we've gone through of those. Just just keep going there because this is fascinating stuff and, and yeah. basic stuff, but things that people need to listen to. Yeah, well, only I'm still on number two, okay. um, taking notice. But one, uh, under under that, I um, well, I'll tell you about. One tool that I quite make good use of, I reckon, um, I, I've got what I call my delete button in my head. Um, you know, I, I used to be quite quite bad at uh, overthinking things a lot. Um, you know, I might, have, might might be having a, a, a good day on the farm, and for example, it might have a, a farm worker might say something that just whatever it is, it's something silly, but it really would annoy me. Um, you might have a snide comment, and and uh, I'd spend the next two or three hours just stewing on it and just thinking about it and um, going over and over in, in my head, thinking, um, you know, I'm going to have to have a, a word with him, and he's going to say this back to me, and I'm going to say this, and just silly, silly um, ways of thinking. And so now, when when that ha anything like that happens, if it annoys me or um, or just some, that first negative thought that comes into my head. I'll um, quickly analyse it and decide is it worth worrying about. And ninety percent of the time, it's not. So, and I'll think, well, hit, hit the delete button. Um, and it takes a bit of practice, but honestly, I can say now that if anything like that, like that happens, two minutes later, I wouldn't be able to tell you what it was that I was worried about. So, um, but I'm not. I'm not talking about. Um, you know, some some things we need to worry about. Um, some. Stress and anxiety is actually good for us. It gets us motivated. It gets things done. 
But um, I'm talking about the worries that are out of our control, you know, um, the catastrophizing that we do, the ruminating, that endless loop of negative thoughts. I'm, um, hit the delete button on, on that. It's, uh, and, yeah, it's, there's just so much we worry about that's just not worth it. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, uh, wise <laughs> words as well, just get, get rid of that and, and move on, I suppose, get, get grow, grow a thicker skin of some of those things as well. Yeah, yeah well, um, <clears throat> number three is uh, being active. And, um, yeah, like, like I just said, I've just been out for a run this morning um but um, and it's i what i've what i've found is that it's just great for my mental health as well as well as my physical health um i uh yeah a few years ago it sort of came about because we had a serious drought at home and i was really i was really stressed i was worked up um and our farm consultant came to see us and and one of the things he yeah, we have him every two months and one of the things he told me to do to help deal with the drought he, he said um uh Rotorua marathon is in a few months i think you should train for that and run the Rotorua marathon and i i, I was like what what you know how's that going to help the farm and um and i yeah i just i just do everything my farm consultant tells me to so i so i had to start training um i was terrible at running i was two stone heavier than what I am now. I'd, I'd done nothing for years. Um, but, and it was awful to start with. I, I just hated it. And, and uh, But as I as I got a little bit fitter and um, just, you know, I kept at it. And I, I just noticed uh, I would be quite, I'd be really uh, anxious and stressed. And I'd pull the, pull the running shoes on, go for a run, and I just felt my the worries just melt away. And um, I'd be able to think more clearly, and I'd come back to the farm just um, more focused. And believe it or not, it actually gave me more energy. Um, so, I mean, if, um, I, if I just interrupt there, um, yeah. most farmers will tell you that they are active. They're active all the time because they're out there working and doing stuff. But what you're saying is mm. doing something activity that's actually not involved in your in your day to day. So doing something active that yeah. rather than just you know, you walk, you're going around the sheep. Just hey, walking around the sheep. Yeah, we all yeah. have to walk around the sheep until we find a dead one. But <laughs> the, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's oh, doing something away exactly. from, away from the farm that's that's active is, is what you're saying is is um is better for our mental yeah. health. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know. Yeah, usually we're quite active on the farm, but we're as we're as we're doing doing things on the farm, we're 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 worried about, um, anxious about what what's happening. You're looking looking at other other things uh, on the farm, so you sort of. I think it's helpful to just to get out of that environment and and completely away to, okay. um, yeah, and I I think it's actually if you can to do something with. Um, with other people and that's you're getting then you're getting your connecting as well so um and there's so many different options if you if you look for it um to yeah so many different things you can do going to the gym or or whatever it is just to um does a, does a round of golf help does a round of golf help i do play golf with john from time to time although i haven't played lately but does a round of golf help or do we need to do something a bit more active than that says me in my defense oh absolutely no that's that's perfect yeah get out and, pl- and play golf and you with with mates or f- with friends as well so you're connecting with with other people and yeah yeah just and it's also you know, mindfulness it's great mindfulness because um while you're concentrating on hitting that ball um you're not. You, there's no way you can be thinking of um, your worries from the previous days or what you've got to. You know, how many things you've got to do the, the next days. You're actually concentrating on the present, which this is all about. What mindfulness is. Okay. Yep. Um, it might not do your mental health much good when you slice it and, and you bloody go <laughs> five over par, though. I've seen me crying <laughs> down the golf course before now and threatening to throw the clubs away. But yes, generally it is to be out with mates is is, is good, and that's that's brilliant. And uh, so that that's moving us on, and 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 the fifth way now. Oh, we're, we're still still on uh, number four. Sorry. Um, so number uh, number four is giving. So um, and and that's why I do what I do. Um, I, I work. I'm a farm strong ambassador. So yeah, I don't I don't um, get paid or anything by farm strong. I, I do it. Um, or and I work with the Rural Support Trust in New Zealand, which is uh, uh, similar to Rasabi in in Scotland. Um, the, the way I, the reason I do it is that actually giving back just actually feels bloody good, um, and it's scientifically proven 
to you know when you being kind um, actually makes the giver feel feel good. So um, and you know I've looked into all the science of of all this and we get a little there's a feel good hormone oxytocin that we we get a little burst of that when we we're, we're good to someone. So and it it doesn't have to be a big thing. Um, it might be just letting people in, someone into traffic, um, holding a door open for someone or, or just or buying a coffee for someone, just things like that. Um, uh, yeah, make, it, make the, make the better, world a better place and it actually makes you feel good. And I've got it. There's a, a saying that I really agree with. Um, the best feeling of happiness is when you're happy because you've made somebody else happy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, giving is number four. Um, yeah, you're absolutely giving. I mean, hey, they say at Christmas it's not about having the presents, it's about giving them. And I can totally understand how, you know, the, 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 the ethos behind helping other people to help yourself, yeah, and it's a win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's, yeah, it's, it can be just your time or, um, you know, I know in, in rural areas in New Zealand um, it's often, you know, it just being, it always seems to be the same people that are either on the board of trustees for the school or the, um, or you know, there's always the same people putting their hands up to help, and um, in some ways, those people are onto it. They know they know it actually makes them feel good to to give back. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And num- number five is um, to keep learning, which um, is yeah, so important to keep keep the old brain cells ticking over, especially as we get older. Um, as we get older, we we can get set in our ways and. Um, and yeah, that's if we we tend to get more set in our ways, we get the um, the more more grumpy we get as we get older. So um, it's so important to keep those brain cells working. Um, so one of the, one of the benefits I've I've had from my depression, I've I've learnt so much about the science behind why we feel like we do, whether we're happy or sad. Um, it's really helped my mental wellness to know that. There's a physical reason for how I felt. You know, the, the all the, the neurotransmitters in your in your brain, the hormones, the different parts of your brain. It wasn't because I was weak or pathetic, and that's that's how I felt at the time. But I've, it's it's helped my wellness to to know that that wasn't the case. As farmers, we we're pretty good at learning about our um, you know growing better grass, um, our looking after crops, keeping our animals healthy, maintaining our machinery, but. I didn't pay any attention, and I don't think I think a lot of farmers don't pay too much attention to looking after the the most important piece of machinery on the farm, and that's your brain. So we yeah we need to learn about this this stuff, um, and there's so much you can do to to just to pick up pick up new skills. Uh, like for example, I I picked up I picked up a guitar and started. I got on YouTube, and there's so much on that on um, YouTube and, and Google that you can how to and, and teach yourself how to uh, you know do things like play a guitar and, sure. and do some singing. And with you know, when you come in from the farm and you're stressed, just picking up a guitar and strumming it for ten minutes, trying to learn a new song, it actually um, is yeah helps helps the mental health. It just gives you a, a bit of a release. Sure, yeah, if you know, sure. if you like. Sure, and, and yes, as we said, learning, I mean, it's a saying every day is a school day and we all learn something during the day that very often by accident when somebody says something a bit like I'm always learning on this on this podcast, but you're saying actually go out there and, and, and physically try and learn, as you said, you learn the clinical side maybe of depression rather than just, a, rather than just the, the symptoms. And uh, yeah, so yeah. you're saying to people, yeah. get out there, get online, go on a course, to, uh, enroll on something to go and do it or just generally learn a little bit every day? Oh um, yeah, like I'm saying, what if you've? It's just a, a matter of um, what are you interested in and um, and learning and and you're just get, getting on Google and saying how to how to do whatever it is. There's so much you can, um, and this is I think this is where, for example, my my wife fits in. Um, so like she is when I say being being active is good for your mental health. She's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And she, she's always learning with, um, she's very creative. So she paints and, and she owns our local antique shop. And um, she, she's full on learning, uh, doing all that sort of thing too. And, you know, and that's, that's what you've got to find, what works for you and, and locking it in is what, what we say on 
found strong. And, and again, we're talking learning something out with. We can all learn how to grow a bigger cow, as you said, or, 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 to, grow, or to feed the sheep. But you're saying learn something out with your day to day life to give you a, a, a second, different interest in something that, that uh, inspires yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's um, yeah, it's really important to have have something off the farm as well that's completely completely new to um, um, to pick up. So you you're not 100 percent focused on um, what's happening on the farm. Mm-hmm. Mm, Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Five great ways. And you and you mentioned earlier on about activity, and I suppose sport comes into that category as well. And I know you've got um, Sam Whitelock, the uh, ex-New Zealand or ex-All Blacks uh, captain, is uh, a dairy yep. farmer, and he's been a good ambassador for you, hasn't he, Big Sam? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, he um, he grew up on a dairy farm, um, and now he, he's got his own sheep and beef um, farm in the Hawke's Bay. So he's... He's definitely a farmer, and yeah, when he when he retires from his rugby, I think he'll be um, he'll be into it. Um, yeah, boots and all. I'm, I'm saying mm. ex yeah. ex All Black captain Sam. If you're listening, you might still be All Black captain. We haven't seen the All Blacks up here for a while, but uh, is he still, he's yeah, still yeah. pulling his boots on? Right. Is he at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he'll be um, he'll be going strong at the World Cup. I think. Yeah, and so he was he was captain. I think when they came to Scotland um, in November. Um, and yeah, by the way, I've this is probably the highlights of my trip to Scotland. I, watching Scotland beat England at Twickenham <laughs> was, in, a, in a Scottish pub was you're not, bloody outstanding. You're not allowed to mention. I'm going to have to edit that. Out. You're not allowed to mention that on this. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. It was a great. Uh, and rugby is a great. <laughs> it's a great level. A lot of farmers play rugby, of course, especially in Scotland. And uh, but there's all sorts of sports out there. Out, aren't there out there yep. but Sam White like what does he do for you does he go around doing what you, what you do is he going around does he use uh, rugby as as a as a tool for his own mental health as a comparison yeah oh so much of what farm strong uh the farm strong program sort of applies not only to farming but also to uh sport so i mean he uses all all of these the tools and resources in his um in his rugby as well mm. so yeah no he um he, you know, comes comes along to like the national field days, th- things like that. Um, comes along and um, yeah, gets gets people talking. And it, yeah, it's great to have someone like Sam involved. He's a, he's a legend. You do need mm. do you need those figureheads, don't you? That, that for all you can all talk yeah. sense if you've just got somebody that's just got a little bit of fame about them and they can use that to their advantage then uh, hey, Sam's gaining out of that as well I'm sure but uh, that's brilliant that you've got people like that coming on board and obviously you're out there looking for more what um, we mentioned uh, um, globally or I mentioned you certainly from from New Zealand to Scotland is you know, the similar types of countries similar types of people in a lot of ways uh, are we going yeah. global with this what about, I've got a lot of American listeners on I've got a lot of listeners <laughs> in, in Ireland and of course England and I've got a lot of listeners in America I mean are you going are we setting these up bit by bit, piecemeal across the world, at, uh, one at a time, or, or are they all are they all on the go? Oh no, no. Um, so I mean, Farm Strong was just was established in New Zealand, and uh, yeah, we're we're not uh, aiming for global domination. But um, what, I think what's happened is uh, Scotland has, um, and I think like, as John said, they asked Doug Avery, "What what do you think we should do next?" And he he said to have a look at Farm Strong, and so. Scotland is all all they're doing is um, replicating the New Zealand experience and just using it as a template. So um, yeah, it's not. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's still it's still called Farm Strong, but I, I think uh, it'll take a little bit of time. But um, Farm Strong is going to have all their own stories and their own um, farmers involved, and um, yeah, so it's definitely going to be focused on Scotland. So, um, but uh, in the meantime. While that's being set up, there's, there's so many tools and resources on the New Zealand website that obviously everyone's um, welcome to go on and have a look at and, and get get what they can out of it and while, while Scotland's being being set up Certainly the fun- as a local thing. Yeah. And then the farmstrong.com. Um, co.nz is where people need to go and have a look at that and it's a fantastic website with a lot of resources on there and if there are people out there 
in England, Ireland, Wales, wherever, and who, who would like to do this the same way that, that John's done here and get in touch with Farmstrong and start setting that, that that's up over there. And likewise in the US, I guess. I mean, there, there will be other organizations, I'm sure, but uh, if anybody mm. out there, we know a lot of listeners in the in, in the USA there that wants to get involved in setting up something over there, they, they come to yourself or they go on their website, is there a phone number they can call or they get in touch? Yeah, Jared Vaughan's probably the man to talk to. Um, yeah, but it, it, in Scotland, it's been, you know, the steering committee, a great group of people. So it's about a, a, a group of people um, getting involved and um, getting it started. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Jared Vaughan's the man to talk to. He's, he's, uh, he's the, the man behind Farmstrong in New Zealand. He's a great person to have involved. Jared Vaughan. Um, yeah. And, and, and through their website, I noticed I registered this morning, they can register in. And did, I read some of you were, you were monitoring behavior metrics. I think John mentioned that you sort of sent out, a, um, they sent out a survey. And, you know, how much of this stuff are you, are you guys within the, within the office? Are you, are you measuring this and, and, uh, and, and yeah, yeah. measuring the signs and um, things? Is that doable? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I said, I'm a farmer who's used um farm strong to to help me so um i'm not involved in the all of the day-to-day running there's three or four full-time people that are involved in in farm strong in new zealand but um so i do know a little bit of the the figures because they survey farmers each year just to monitor how what impact they're having and i think one of the things i remember is that uh last year it was found that fifteen thousand um farmers reported that they had been positively impacted um, by FarmStrong, you know, so they it helped the way they they think and the way they farm. So, yeah, I mean, and that's the beauty of something like this. 15,000 people, um, or 15,000 farmers, so it's got a pretty wide reach. It is. Um, it's, you know, and, yeah, I, as I say, I work with the Rural Support Trust as well in New Zealand, so, um, and we're helping people in, in crisis, but there's only so much you can do one on one, so only so many people we can reach. But uh, the beauty of Farmstrong is you can hopefully reach. Um, there's a much wider wider reach, um, so ho- hopefully help a lot more um, people, and not just you know obviously people that aren't in, in crisis, so people that just just want to look after their. their um, wellness. Sure. You don't, that's mm. what I'm going to say. I and mean, we have you know, two or three thousand listeners a week through this podcast at, at, um, across the globe. And people, it, it isn't about feeling mentally ill and therefore getting involved. And if you don't feel mentally ill, then you know there's nothing to do with you. It, it involves everybody, mm. and and that helping with the, you know spreading that well-being message. Maybe if you don't feel mentally ill but you want to help somebody else it's about getting involved yep. and hopefully that, uh, that having you on here mark it's been fantastic to hear your story and having you on here as, as um we've spread the world a little bit wider which is, which is a commendable effort and it's a commendable effort what you're yeah. doing as well traveling around scotland giving your time to, to talk to a lot of people yeah no no i've i've loved it it's um yeah it's really been um humbling as i say it's the Connections between New Zealand and Scotland are pretty pretty strong. Um, yeah, I've, so many people here have, have been to New Zealand. It's it's quite unbelievable. But and uh, I, I have had a, a few um, down moments. I'm, I really am missing my my wife and, and family. Maria couldn't couldn't come unfortunately. But man, I've it's been helped so much by the the people I've been hosted by. Uh, uh, they just welcome me like family. So that. They've been fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. The Scottish people are awesome. <laughs> you say Scottish people have been there. I've been to New Zealand twice and both have been in, um, on rugby tours and both times we've come home with a tail between our legs. Not the most uplifting experience, but <laughs> fantastic the way we were looked after. We've always been looked after down there. Kiwis have that nature, don't they, of looking after people. And Scottish people do too. And I think every, oh, everybody yeah. should do. And that's just what we're advocating here. And I think I read somewhere that a slogan of yours that nobody teaches you to look after yourself. And I think you, you can learn everything else, but nobody teaches you to look after yourself. And that seems to be very much what, uh, yeah, what yeah. Farmstrong's message is, is trying to do is that right? Yeah, yeah, and and yeah, with with your wider audience around the world, I th- I think it's a pretty we, we've got a Scotland and New Zealand have a special bond, but I think maybe it's actually farm farmers have a pretty special bond exactly. all around the world, and we we speak the same language, um, and yeah, it's uh, a, a good good bond to have. Yeah. I'm proud to be a farmer, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're dead right. Farmers do, farmers do have that bond between them, and and what you're doing here really is investing in the future of farming, I suppose, by you know, 
by the work that you're doing there, which is again is a commendable effort for you and the whole of the mm. and the whole of Farmstall. Mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here, Mark, and, and John's dropped off the call there. But uh, John, great work that you're doing there as, as um, in the steering committee and Alan Laidlaw and all the other ones that are involved in that. And uh, let's hope that Farmstrong goes stronger and stronger. And uh, if we can help you in any way through through the, uh, um, our social media presence to, to promote this word, then we very much will do, not just here in Scotland, as you say, but uh, but around the world. So, Mark, thanks very much for your time. And uh, you've got another couple of three of these to go and then you'll be you'll be back down down for some sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope so. We're, we're, yeah, it's been terrible weather in New Zealand since I've left, and actually, we had a huge cyclone over the last couple of days. So we've got. I've, um, I'm really, really thinking about my farm staff at home. We've got tree, big trees down um, on our tanker track, or where the milk tanker comes. So they took them quite a few hours to clear that, including my 80-year-old dad, apparently that was on top of the tree with a chainsaw. <laughs> Um, it, it, luckily, he's still alive. So, um, yeah, silly old bugger. Farm, but, um, farm safety, farm health and safety is something we should, we have discussed. And yeah, right. But I'm sure yeah. I'm sure he'd be well strapped on and and, and looked after. And I know there's been floods <laughs> floods down there and floods in Australia as well. And we are seeing a change in the weather pattern, yeah. which is something else that farmers do get concerned about. But at the end of the day, you can't change the weather. You just got to go with it. And, and uh, as you said, letting it get you down is isn't the right isn't the right attitude. Oh, it's deal um, with the blows you throw. No, uh, no, don't worry. We, um, we're going to, in our country. We'll be, we're going to be paying a methane emissions tax from 2025. So the weather's going to be um, pretty good after that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, don't worry. We'll, we've got it sorted. <laughs> Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Uh, thanks very much, and best of luck with the rest of the tour. And congratulations from me and probably from our listeners as well for the great work that you're doing. Oh, thanks for your support. Yeah, it means a lot. So no, we'll, let's get the get the word around and you see you know farm strong in new zealand has has changed people's lives and i think it's uh, yeah if it's embraced in scotland i think it'll do the same yeah. brilliant mm. brilliant work well yeah. thanks for thanks again mark that's been superb okay thank you Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Top Lines and Tales. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Harbro. And uh, at this time of year, when calving is fast approaching, it's highly recommended to move the cows onto the super succular minerals at least six weeks before calving to get the cow and calf ready and to boost that most important colostrum quality. Look out Harbro on the internet or on social media or contact your local representative for more information. And whilst you're on social media, don't forget to look at the Top Lines and Tales Facebook page where you'll find photographs to back up this and other episodes.